Hello everyone. Myself, Professor Shahana Shenbhuto. Presently, I am associated with Swami Vivekananda Institute of Modern Science, Kolkata, as an assistant professor in the Department of Microbiology. First of all, I would like to convey my heartiest thanks to all my viewers and subscribers. In my YouTube channel, I generally share different types of academic videos related to the field of biological science. And if you all found this is useful for you all, please subscribe my channel. Today, I have chosen a topic for you all that is Achuvan. So let's start with our journey with the new topic, Happy Listening. Let's begin with adjuvant. Adjuvant is an immunobiological agent which enhances the body's immune response to an antigen. They are not antigenic by themselves and alone cannot initiate any immune response by themselves. Adjuvants have the capability of stimulating the rapid and sustained production of high titers of antibodies with high affinity and influencing some properties of cell-mediated immunity. The use of adjuvants is required for many antigens which by themselves are weakly immunogenic in nature. Adjuvants, the word, is taken from the Latin word adjuvire, meaning to help. They are designed to improve poorly immunogenic vaccines. Adjuvants were originally described by Raman as substances used in combination with a specific antigen that produced a more robust immune response than the antigen alone thus encompassing a wide range of materials. Adjuvants may be added to a vaccine to boost the immune response to produce more antibodies and longer lasting immunity, thus minimizing the dose of antigen needed to a vaccine. Adjuvants are used in combination with specific antigen that produced a more robust immune response than the antigen can do alone. Let's discuss the role of adjuvants. Adjuvants can affect the immune system in various ways. It can increase the immunogenicity of a weak antigen. It can also enhance the speed and duration of immune response. It can stimulate and modulate humoral response including antibody isotype production. It can also stimulate cell mediated immunity and it also helps in improve induction of mucosal immunity. It can enhance immune response in immunologically immature patients, particularly in infants. It can also help in decreasing the dose of antigen required. It can reduce the cost and eliminating the inconvenient requirement for booster shots. Let's focus on the classification of adjuvants. Adjuvants can be classified according to their source, mechanism of action or physicochemical properties, the administration route, namely mucosal or parenteral. The major three categories of adjuvants are active immunostimulant adjuvants, carrier adjuvants and vehicle adjuvants. The active immunostimulant adjuvants are the substances that increase the immune response to the antigen, whereas the carrier adjuvants are the immunologic protein that provide T-cell help, and the vehicular adjuvants are oil emulsions or liposomes that serves as a matrix for antigen as well as stimulating the immune response. Let's describe the basic mechanism process of all adjuvants. Adjuvants generally follow some step while functioning. 
the first step is the formation of a depot at the site of injection secondly up regulation of cytokines and chemokines leading to cellular recruitment at injection site thirdly antigen presentation fourthly activation and maturation of dendritic cells and lastly there occurred the activation of inflammasomes let's begin with depot effect the depot effect basically includes the slow release of antigen which is supposed to provide continual stimulation to the immune system and it is expected to amplify and sustain immune responses too the antigens present locally for a longer duration so antigen presenting cell reaching the site of injection and pick up the antigen and present it to t cells this leads to a stronger and longer immune response the antigen adjuvant goes into the muscle and insoluble adjuvant keep the antigen at the injection site for dendritic cells to come by and pick it up the epics migrate through blood stream to the local lymph nodes where antigen is then presented to the t cell the very next step is the up regulation of cytokines and chemokines leading to cellular recruitment at the injection site adjuvants basically create a local pro inflammatory environment then recruit immune cell the cluster of genes encoding cytokines chemokines innate immune receptors interferon induced genes and gene coding addition molecule defined as adjuvant core response genes are commonly modulated by adjuvants like alarm mf59 and cpg odn at the site of injection the next step is antigen presentation the role of adjuvant induced increased antigen presentation in the development of adaptive immunity is quite important antigen presentation by mhcs on apcs is important for the induction of adaptive immune response many adjuvants including alarm microparticles and oil based emulsion act by targeting antigens to apcs antigen presentation by mhcs alarm was shown to increase antigen uptake by dendritic cells and alter the magnitude and duration of antigen presentation antigen adsorption on alarm lead to the increase in internalizations of antigen alarm doesn't enter dendritic cells directly but deliver the antigen now i would like to discuss about activation and maturation of dendritic cells or dcs as a part of the mechanism of adjuvants dendritic cells or dcs are the most efficient and professional antigen presenting cells of the immune system activation of dendritic cells is essential for induction of adaptive immune responses many adjuvant particles are needed to induce dendritic cell maturation to enhance adaptive immunity they are like lipopolysaccharide liposomes cpg odn mf59 aso4 etc now i would like to discuss activation of inflammasomes under the mechanism of action of adjuvants innate immune cells express various pathogen recognition receptors or prrs to recognize infectious agents new families of prrs have been identified including tlrs or toll like receptor and clrs that means c type lectin like receptors recently inflammasomes have been one of the most widely investigated topic due to their potential role in adjuvant activity 
Particulate adjuvants cause local tissue damage and cell death at the injection site. In addition, many adjuvants induce release of pro-inflammatory cytokines at the site of injection. This damage signals trigger on non-specific activation of the innate immune system and later stimulating the adaptive immunity too. I would like to conclude my lecture after discussing few examples of adjuvants. Let's begin with Freyans adjuvant. Freyans adjuvant is perhaps one of the most commonly used adjuvants in research today. It is used to trigger a humoral antibody inflammatory response for the production of high titer antibodies. There are two types of Freyans adjuvant, complete and incomplete. Complete Freyans adjuvants or CFA is a water in oil emulsion which also contains inactivated mycobacteria. Whereas incomplete Freyans adjuvant or IFA is the same water in oil emulsion but doesn't contain any mycobacteria pathogen. The second one is alum. Aluminium containing adjuvants are vaccine ingredients that have been used in vaccine since 1930s. Alum, the most commonly used vaccine adjuvant, consists of aluminium salt that are not soluble in water. Alum is included in numerous vaccines, including those that prevent hepatitis B and human papilloma virus. Let's talk about ASO4 that was started using in 2009. It is basically monophosphoryl lipid A that was used under this adjuvant. After that, I would like to discuss about MF59. MF59 is the adjuvant contained in an influenza vaccine licensed for adults aged. 65 or older. MF59 is an oil in water emulsion composed of squalene, which is a naturally occurring oil found in many plants and animal cells as well as in humans. Now I would like to talk about ASO1. ASO1 is made up of monophosphoryl lipid A, an immune boosting substance isolated from the surface of bacteria. It is also a component of vaccines currently being tested in clinical trials including malaria and HIV vaccine. Lastly, I would like to discuss about CPG. 1018. CPG1018 is a recently developed adjuvant used in Hep D safe B vaccine. It is made up of cytosine phosphoguanine motifs, which is a synthetic form of DNA that mimics bacterial and viral genetic material. When CPG1018 is included, in a vaccine, it definitely increases the body's immune response. Thanks a lot for your patience. Please do subscribe my channel. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos in different fields of biosciences.